Chief K here today with the Canberra Ultra Radiac Personal Radiation Detector Dosimeter. We carry this on engine 1412 as part of our hazmat detection equipment. It's kept in the black plastic case in the cab. So why would we need this? What would we use this for? Well, radiation, ionizing radiation particularly, cannot be detected by sight or smell. We have to use something other than our senses to detect it, and that's what this instrument is designed to do. So what are some situations where we might want to get this out? The handy field guide is included in your compartment here. And here, here's a couple incidents that we might want to get this out and, and take a look. Hazmat involvement, uh, transportation accidents, especially your FedEx trucks, your medical couriers, things of that nature. A suspicious package, an explosion, any, anything that uh, you're questioning uh, when you arrive on scene, especially unknowns, when you don't really know what the situation is uh, and possible hazardous materials are involved, you need to get this out. This is our first monitoring priority for hazmat, is radiation. Handy Guide has a lot of other good information in here. Uh, you can even get it out on, on your way to the scene if, if necessary and do a quick refresher. Inside covers a little bit more uh, details about specific instances, instances where uh, radioactive sources may be present and isotopes. So, how do we get it to work? We do not store the batteries inside the Ultra Radiac. They have a tendency to corrode the compartment and that could lead to equipment failure. So we keep the batteries, four, double A, four triple A's, excuse me, four triple A's inside the black case in a separate area. Put them in here. Okay, we're going to close the case. A little difficult sometimes, quarter turn to lock it in and we're ready to go. I recommend that you place it back inside the holster and instead of carrying it around and taking up one of your, your hands, you can actually attach it through your SCBA belt and have it hang there. So when you look up, you can bring it up and take a look at the display. Uh, Hands-off approach. So we're going to turn it on. It'll go through a brief warm-up. And it's going to start providing you a dose rate. And this rate means, uh, in essence, it's your speedometer. This can go up and co can go down. Uh, based on the presence of radiation. Now you should always get a reading. Uh, there's enough natural radioactivity on Earth to produce a, a reading that's in the low low numbers. Uh, and we're using uh, the, the UR scale right here. It's an auto adjustment scale. It'll start in the UR, it'll go up to the MR, and it go up to the R in the, the most extreme cases. Uh, these are both 100 factors of difference. So the higher up you go, uh, it's, it's a much greater uh, rate. So one thing important to note is this only detects gamma radiation. By the specific construction, this metallic construction, alpha and beta particles cannot penetrate this uh, device and make it to the sensor. So we're only detecting gamma radiation. So you cannot rule the complete presence of ionizing radiation out of a situation, you can only say that there's no gamma present by using this device. Uh, the rate is what we're in. We can go to dose. This is your odometer. This always will go up. This will be the dose that this detector gets. We won't use that in most cases. Uh, we're just going to use this to detect the presence of radiation and if necessary cordon off, isolate, and notify uh, for, for other activities to take place outside of first in engine company operations. We have alarm levels. The high rate alarm is 100 MR per hour. The low rate alarm is 100 micro R per hour or UR. We would like to use U instead of micro so we don't get that confused with M. So read it exactly as it says UR per hour. Dose alarms, the high dose alarm would be 10R. That's a significant dose. And the low is 5R. 
again, if any of these alarms were to go off, you would leave the area uh, in the dose rate. In, in, um, excuse me, in the dose. Okay, you have a light for low light conditions. Okay, let's see what an alarm sounds like. Have a cesium source. This is gamma uh, cesium-137 source. You can see it's already producing a reaction. And now we have an alarm. It's, it's eclipsed the threshold of 100 micro R per hour. And as you can see, the closer we get, the dose rate will increase. Now we're in the milli R per hour. So that is 2,600 of the U's. It, it is now into a, a, a totally different scale that's auto scaled and adjusted. So you see we're in alarm. It is vibrating and making an audible noise and a visual. To clear that, all you do is simply hit the clear test. And you can still see visually it's an alarm, but it will silence that alarm for you. Now once we bring it away, it'll go below the alarm threshold. And it'll get your background reading again. have another source here. This is natural. This is just a natural rock that is radioactive. And as you can see, uh, once we're in the presence of radiation again, it will go back into alarm. We're at 6 MR per hour. In Illinois, a hot zone would be classified as 2 MR per hour. So anything at and above 2, we would want to isolate. We'll clear that alarm. Now we're going to use a beta source to show you that even though radiation is present in beta particles, uh, this detector will not detect that. This is an active beta source, and as you can see, uh, no reaction whatsoever from the ultra radiac. So it cannot detect alpha or beta. It is only used for gamma detection. Okay, when you're done with the unit, just want to hold the off button, and it'll turn off, and make sure you remove those batteries. If you have any further questions about the use of the Canberra Ultra Radiac, please see me. Thanks.